Hello everyone, this is Trigger here, of course, and today I'm bringing you a, another video that a lot of people have been waiting for, uh, including myself, of course, um, and this video is re uh, talking about the new Fault Minecraft Fall Z release date, and that is going to be for 7-6-2016. Um, basically in 5 days, it'll be on Wednesday, and it'll be around 1pm EST, and I believe that's for my time, so. Um, so yeah. Uh, I'm just going to try to be covering as many of the features as I possibly can that I've added since the last video. I'm just going to say that there has been an insane amount added in since the last video I have posted. Um, so forgive me if I don't cover everything. I know for a fact I'm not going to be able to cover everything. Um, so if you're interested in finding out more information, go in the link in the description below and go to our Fallsy forum page and you'll be able to find out all the information you want. Um, with that said, I plan on making a wiki, and it will have all the information needed to know how to play. Um, though, I want to, um, with our extended help menu and with um, a better spawn tutorial, um, I plan on hopefully covering everything in the game that there is, so you, you should be able to know what to do. And I plan on adding in um, some uh, references in-game somehow, using maybe like paintings or something to actually show you how to um, do things with pictures, especially with the new building system. Which is exactly where we're going to start off at. We are going to start off with the building system in Fallout Minecraft Fall Z. And this new building system is a building system I have never seen in any server that I've ever played on. And it is completely different compared to any version of Fall Z's building systems. <clears throat> so if you watched our previous video, you would, you would have seen that we have like a building system where you can uh, get a battery and you can store power in it from... Um, a solar array or a solar panels. So this is a battery block right here and it's getting powered up from these solar panels and I have one down here as well. So you can actually view this one. Let me change the difficulty to zero so you don't worry about the mobs. Um, so if I open this up, you'll see we have uh, input and output. Um, and yeah, these solar panels are basically powering up this battery. And that was basically all I was showing in the other video besides um, how we use redstone and how we can use um, repeaters to determine where the redstone signal is going. If you're um, if you want more information on that, um, just go to the uh, forum page and you can find more info on that. But So yeah, basically I'm just going to go ahead and cover everything I've added to the forum recently. So we're going to go ahead and start off with um, base building. So before I begin with base building, there is a uh, new friend system. So um, you can add your friends. So you can do... And just keep in mind, this system, the friend system is purely for friends. So I would only recommend this for people you... Um, have been friends with for for years or whatever people you're friends with from your life and etc. Um, because friendship, uh, a friend adding someone as a friend in this game um, makes it to where uh, you are able to destroy and place inside their base no matter what. Um, it doesn't matter if you're in their faction. It doesn't matter um, if yeah. So it's just basically it's just a ultimate way to make sure that your friends can always build in your base. Um, so yeah, just make sure when you use this system that you're adding people that are really your friends so in this case uh, if you want to add a friend you do slash add friend space whoever and let's say it was just snow yes 84 um, well, he's not on of course so it says he's not online or does not exist so he, obviously I know he's not online but that's a real user but and then uh, from him he would do uh, slash accept friend um, xxx sure 50 and he would do that and of course I'm already friends with myself because um, <laughs> I uh, tested that on myself of course so yeah probably should remove that but whatever it's okay so yeah you can add friends and when you have a friend um, they will be able to destroy in your base and place in your base with no problems um, now regarding base building the only way to protect your base is you will have to set up a power grid like this one here this is a basic power grid just uh, ignore this stuff right here we'll remove all this and make it simple um, so this right here is a basic power grid it's just powered a battery and it's just simply being powered off of these solar panels and these solar panels are just charging up the battery and then the battery is going to be used to power a device called a base shield so we'll go ahead and do a little command here to give myself a base shield so there's a base shield and I'll place that down and yeah I s probably should remove all these little debug messages as well um, so you see battery it's gonna say output so it is being drained but we are making more power than we are using so if I go into here we'll see that this says it is functional and the owner shows some random text that is my UUID so that is what Minecraft uh, uses for name changing and stuff like that so that'll always be that way but that's how we detect the owner of the block um, so 
the energy use is 10, and now the block is functional and the owner is me. So uh, if I were to log in a second account, let me go ahead and try doing that real quick. Actually, uh, I'll try demonstrating this because I actually didn't don't normally demonstrate this kind of stuff, so I'll try to real quick. So let's go ahead and log in my other account. Um, so give me just a second. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to make it... Um, it's going to make it... Let me go and TP him here first. It's going to make it to where he can't destroy the blocks here, but I will be able to. So we'll go ahead and TP him here. So there he is. Uh, okay, so now if I switch to his screen... And full screen that real quick. You'll see that when I try to break, um, let me go ahead and place a normal block here. Actually, I had to be in game mode zero as well for this to actually work correctly. So let's grab this dirt, uh, GM zero, and place that dirt in G one. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, destroy that block. And you'll say you're. It says you you're too close to a base shield to break blocks. And obviously this block is this one right here. So. Uh, I can break this one as the player, though, so let me go in and try that. So you can see I was able to break the base shield, and now that it's broken, um, uh, you can only break player blobs and specific map blocks. This is neither of those. Oh, well, I'm technically an admin, so technically that's not... <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Technically I'm not... Um, oh, actually, I don't think dirt's even, like... Um, actually, dirt. Okay, first of all, dirt isn't actually like a block you're allowed to place. I probably should do something more specific. Like, uh, let's go ahead and get like cobblestone or something. Uh, let's do wood planks, maybe. Or, no, I'll do cobblestone because I've actually tested that before. So, uh, cobblestone, and we'll place some of that. Actually, let me GM zero myself. Oh, of course, I forgot about that. Uh, and let me give him a pickaxe real quick. So. Sorry about this. Um, probably should have this better set up, but I just don't. Okay, so pickaxe, and let's go and break that. Okay, yeah, since I'm an OP, basically, I'm, it's. Uh, I guess I could just DOP myself. <laughs> okay, so I've been DOP'd, and um, I do need to go and try it now. There you go. It's not worked because I'm an OP. It wasn't working. Um, but yeah, so you can see I was able to destroy the block now because I was not a OP and I placed the block. So that just prevents um, all the blocks in the map from being removed if we ever need to remove the player blocks for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, so now um, basically that base shield, if that base shield were to be up, if I go ahead and grab that again, um, I'm going to go ahead and place that. Okay, so I'm going to place base shield. Now if I place cobblestone. And I try breaking this. It's going to say I can't because I'm too close to the base shield. Um, so yeah, basically, um, I'm going to go and lock him off now. So basically, the thing you should know is um, you need a base shield to protect your blocks. The very basics of it. Um, and you see a lot of soul sand here. That's because our players actually leave tracks. Um, and you can, if you have the perk tracker, if you have the perk, uh, perk for uh, tracker, then you'll be able to actually know which direction they were looking, how far they were, how long ago it was placed, and stuff like that. Um, so a bunch of other cool stuff. Um, oh, I'm not OP yet. <laughs> Let me go and OP myself real quick. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's basically the building. So base shields don't protect themselves. And they don't pr protect other base shields. Um, this makes it possible for people to do raids. So if um, later on I plan on adding the ability to actually shoot it to break it, um, that's not in just yet. But for now, you will be able to raid people's bases using explosives. So um, let's go ahead and just grab some TNT so I can explain this basic system. So you can raid a base uh, with a base shield. It enables the protection for all blocks. Um, if you don't have a base shield, blo uh, blocks are able to be broken just by default. So you need to go ahead and get that taken care of as soon as possible. So now once you have the base shield placed, uh, let's say you had, um, let's just go ahead and grab some planks and some cobblestone. So when you build your base, let's just say you're building up a little wall. And here's your wall. If someone has a, let me go and name this real quick, six, one, explosive. Okay, so now pretend this block here is the tier one explosive. If you were to place a tier one explosive block right here, let me clear that weather. Okay, 
So, now the brother's gone, of course. All, all sorts of intrusions in this video. So now that the TNT's been placed, the, um, this block, if this tier 1 explosive were to blow up, it would break only the wood planks. It would not break the cobble uh, stone. And that's because the cobblestone is a tier 2 material, whereas a wood plank is a tier 1 material. So you would need a tier 2 explosive. Um, so let me only get the tier 2 explosive. Tier 2 explosive. And I place that, and there's your tier 2 explosive. Now that will be able to break uh, some of these boss if it were to blow up. And on top of that, the tier 2 explosive would actually blow up some of the wood blocks as well, because tier 2 is greater than 1, so therefore it can break any material up to tier 2. Um, and that works up. The same concept applies to tier 3 and tier 4. Um, how you sh The one important thing to know, though, is that you could only place the corresponding tiered explosive based off of what I call the radar intensity. So every week, the radar intensity increases by 1. It starts off at 0 during the first week. So during the first radar intensity level, or week 1, you will not be able to place any explosives of any kind. Um, and yeah, that just kind of gives people like a little grace period to get set up. So, and during that time, you won't be able to place anything, but during uh, week one, you will be able to place tier one explosives, so you will be able to destroy up to tier one blocks, like wooden planks. Then tier two, you will be able to uh, destroy tier two um, blocks um, with tier two explosive, because you'll be able to place them. And then tier three, etc. Um, tier four um, will never be reached, because at the end of the month, there isn't just enough weeks to reach that number. But during tier four, there will be specific days throughout the week that will be... Um, or throughout the month, rather, that will be assigned. And then all protections will be disabled, and all blocks will be destroyable. So you'll be able to place Tier 4 explosives, which could destroy every block possible. Now, these days will only occur once or twice a month, or I'm not really sure about the exact number, but they won't occur very often per month. So just keep that in mind. Um, so with that said... Uh, you will be able to uh, raid people's bases during those times. Now, you will not be able to raid a person who is offline. People who are offline have a immunity from anyone who is online. They have to be online in order to be raided. However, when a player is online, the basic raiding concepts that I just described do apply. But if that player were to, let's say, let's say you were going to say, hey, I'm going to raid you, Bobby, and Bobby says, um, fine, I'm just going to log off. He logs off. Well, now you can't break his base. That kind of sucks. So I actually made a countermeasure. So if Bobby were to log off like he did, then his base would still be vulnerable for five minutes even after he logged off. So it would pretend that he's online for five minutes, essentially. So this way you could still raid his base. Uh, this will prevent people from leaving um, during mid-raid and stuff like that. So this number will change later on. So it may not just be five minutes. It could be longer or less, depending on the, how well the system works. So that's the basics to... Um, uh, base protection slash rating. Um, going back towards um, base devices and generating power, there's many ways to generate power. Um, let me check this console. Okay, and one of the ways to generate power obviously has been solar. Solar is the easiest way to do power, um, but it might not be the most efficient because during the day, um, the best time when it generates the most power when the sun is directly above it and least amount when it's over in that direction and over in that direction. So the higher up it is, the more power it generates. And obviously during the night, it doesn't generate any power at all. So that's the downside to solar power. Um, so you kind of need a lot more batteries to run a build like that. There's a few other ways to generate power. Um, these generation methods include, let me go and get the long list here so I can explain it without mixing any of it. There is solar generation, which I just described, wind generation, um, which is a little more rewarding. Um, it's right here. It just requires a windmill to be built behind it, which does take a little bit of resources, so you will have to scavenge all of these parts to build it. And then you have to place the wind generator right here, um, and directly in front of it. So, And then you have to have the output set up to a battery, of course, and yeah. So basically, the higher up your... Um, the higher up your windmill is built, uh, imagine this, that there is a flat 0 to 15, and that number is randomly decided. Um, if that number picks 0, or um, let's just say it picks 0, then you're going to generate no power. But there's also a bonus amount that's um, added based off of your height, so it's 0 to 15 as well. So the higher up you are, the more that bonus goes up, so you always generate a minimum of 1 power. Um, and that's a constant power as well, so that's something that is very... Uh, isn't really offered um, at low tiered power generation like this. So this is a very good way to get power. Um, however, it does need to be built up higher to actually be effective. It does. It starts getting a bonus after C level, so you need to be up pretty high. Um, this is a decent height right here to get a bonus. So you'll need to be up on a mount or something too. Um, making it a little harder to use, but if you do get it set up, it's going to be quite rewarding. Um, 
So yeah, with that said, you will be able to set up this. This is another power generation. You can use that, and it's quite rewarding. Um, a very simple one as well. Another low tier generation is hydro power. Um, I can go ahead and set it up just really quickly, just to go ahead and describe another mechanic in the game. So let's go ahead and do um, FM give trigger a. Hopefully, I set this up right. Hydro generator. So did I get it. I did. Hey, okay, worked. Um. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, also grab a battery real quick, because those are the mechanics you're going to need. And then a hopper as well, because that's something else you need. So the first thing you need to do is you need to place the hydro generator itself. So let's go ahead and place that. So hydro generator has been placed. The next thing you need to do is you need to, uh, let's go inside, you need to make this functional say true. So um, it does require... Oh, it generates five power, so it's a little low generation compared to most things, but it is a constant flow. Um, so the next thing you need to do is you need to give it water. So the lapis lazuli blocks represent item tubes, uh, or I mean not item tubes, liquid tubes. So you can use these to place like this, and then place a hopper at the end directly above water. This will mean now that the hydro, uh, the hyd the water is being sucked up into the hopper and being sent to the tube to the device. So now it is functional, because now it's been set up correctly. Uh, now the next thing you need to do is you need to give it some uh, a, a way, to, a place to store the power. So we're just going to go ahead and store the power right here, right in the battery. And we should see that go up by. We should see the input go to five. Okay, there we go. Five out of a thousand, and then it's just going to slowly increase. So that's hydro generation. Hydro generation is a pretty nice, very simple way to set it up. Doesn't it takes a lot less work, um, and it is a constant flow of power. So that's kind of nice. Um, with that said, though, you will be able to use um, another, there's a, a couple other versions, which like combustion generation, steam generation, and oil generation. I'm not going to show combustion and steam because it, they are a little more complex than this. Um, I will show oil generation since it, since it is the most complex, um, but it is the end game uh, energy resource generation. So the first thing you need to do for oil generation is you need to obviously... Uh, get a battery set up. The very first thing I would do is set up a battery. So your battery gets set up. So let's say I just place the battery right here. The next thing you need to do is um, place your pump jack, which a pump jack is going to mine oil from a oil field. Uh, finding the oil field isn't going to be covered in this video. Basically, the oil fields will be placed by admins. They will dry up eventually, so they're not a permanent source of power, but they will provide, they're near permanent, they will provide an insane amount of power. Um, so yeah, the pump jack is set up here, and you see it says how much oil is in the field that we're currently in, and how much energy use it is using to pump oil itself. So, um, after placing the pump jack, you set up a liquid tube going to a oil tank, and the oil tank, um, then the oil is actually stored into the oil tank, so if we wait right here, we'll see a little bucket that popped up there. That's oil. Um, it's just a visual representation for us. Um, it's better than just using the water icon itself. So yeah, so now the oil is getting stored there, and then the another liquid tube is transporting the oil t oil from the oil tank into the oil generator, and then this here is producing a crap ton of power, and then the power is being sent to our battery here. And it's also it's also nice to note that the um, oil tank right here is using five power, so it's going right this direction like that into the battery. So it's taking power from there, and the same thing from this. This is taking 50 power as well. So, and uh, that this is a not very condensed version of this, but you can make a very tiny version of this really if you were to put these close enough together. Like this could be very, very small and very condensed. Um, but yeah, this is an oil generator, and this is about um, as complex as the system gets so far. Later on, there's going to be item tubes, which are going to be represented by purple blocks and hoppers. Um, you'll be able to use hopper or droppers. I mean, droppers to filter items, uh, depending on which items you want to get taken out of chest and etc. So, a chest right here that has uh, a tier two explosive in it. If there's a tier two explosive in here, then it'll grab all tier two explosives and move them from here to the end down to this chest over here. If it's a device, um, let's say there's like the purifier device, it's a device that you can use to purify radiated water bottles, then you'll be able to move the item into the purifying slot, which then will be automatically purified. So automation is something that is going to come into the server. It is just not in the server just yet, but it is one of the major goals of the server. It's not going to be out on release, but it's going to be shortly after release as one of the main focal points. Um, but yeah, that's just not yet to come. So 
that is the base building system. Um, there is so much in the base building system, of course, that I'm not going to be able to cover. Um, and there's another important thing to note is that you will be able to build in virtually everywhere minus key locations. Uh, key locations include cities like this. Uh, Brim City, Jacinto, Valley City, military bases, stuff like that. But it is worth noting that you will be able to build at locations like this. Let me go ahead and just TP around. So you will be able to build like right here. This is a spot you could build at. You would be fine building here. And of course, I bet that it probably won't be buildable when the server's up, but whatever. So you would be able to build here. This is a spot where you, you will more than likely be able to build because it's not actually in the map itself. It's very close to it, but you'll be fine building there. Um, other locations, for example, would be like right here. This spot is, right here is a perfect spot for base, and this would be very open for someone to build at. Um, so yeah, uh, you will be able to build anywhere. You will be able to, um, uh, let's go and discuss where you can um, find devices. You can get devices from crafting them. If your intelligence is high enough, you can loot them as well. You can buy them um, from the marketplace, which I'll cover shortly. And you will be able to... Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. Oh, you will also. Oh, that what I was trying to say is you'll need to have a high enough intelligence to place some, intelligence to place some of the devices. So this makes intelligence builds more valuable than they used to be, um, or were as of the build. Um, so yeah, that's just something nice to know. Uh, the next thing I want to note is uh, building blocks. So you'll be able to place almost every block in the server that you can see. So cobblestone, dirt, for example, you'd be able to place not dirt um, because I want to restrain that just for now, but later on you'll be able to place that kind of stuff. But as of right now, you'll be able to place um, some very select materials just to test out the building system so we don't have too many issues just in case something happens. So you will be able to place obsidian, uh, planks, cobblestone, brick, um, and some other um, random things like that too. And they all have their tiered value of how um, hard they are. So, and that determines how weak they are to other explosives. So, um, so yeah, we'll be able to place basically every block. So this is something that normally hasn't been achieved in any version of Fallsy. So it's very nice to know for once. Um, and let's go over how many devices there is. I believe there's 11 devices as of right now. Most of those being energy generation. There is no really cause, whoops. There really is no cosmetic items yet. There is items like the purifier device, uh, base shield, and base loader. But I consider the last two I just mentioned very vital to the server. So it's not really considered a base device. But yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, the next thing I want to go ahead and cover after the building system is our stealth system. So when I was playing, I was running into the issue to where mobs would just murder me. So that was kind of annoying. Um, and just and that wasn't, it wasn't because they're too fast or something like that. It was because the mobs themselves can actually like when you hit one, Minecraft's uh, changed their AI to where if you hit one mob, all the zombies in the nearby mile radius hear you, so they all start coming to you. So that's kind of annoying. So I fixed that, um, and I changed it to be uh, if uh, you could basically play stealthy now. So when you first start, you should try not to kill zombies. Um, you should try to get gear instead. So you can evade zombies, and you can evade zombies by several means. Um, basically, zombies have vision, and they kind of have a, a tell, and this tell determines if they can tell if you're a human or not. So the what methods they can determine if you're human depends on mainly on what kind of lighting you're in. Are, is it the middle of the night? If it is the middle of the night, then you won't be able to be seen for nearly as far as you would be normally. So they'd have to actually... Um, They'd have to be closer to you to actually tell you at the night. And if it's daytime, they can see you from much farther. Um, you can crouch to reduce this greatly. This is the sneaking. So it actually allows you to literally sneak. Um, so if you're sneaking around, it makes the zombies harder to see you. Uh, and then if you're inside buildings, so the light level. So if we go here, you can see my light says 15 in the left there. If I go into this building, you'll see it's going to go down. That also manipulates um, whether or not mobs can see you. So staying to the shadows, like in this area right here, uh, staying in this little area compared to here, would uh, provide you with uh, more cover. So it makes it harder for mobs to see you. This uh, is affected by the higher your... Get the pit boy here. The higher your uh, perception is, the greater this is. So every 25 levels, you also get this reduced by one. So... Um, it's called your attention level, so if your perception is 100, you're going to get four values, re four reduced from your attraction level, which is a very high amount. And then your agility also um, is kind of like a secondary, so uh, for every 33 of it, so basically maximum of three, you can get three reduced off of it. So, um, And basically, 
uh, for example, if I were to set um, difficulty day, or difficulty day, whoops, a difficulty three, let's go on and uh, spawn up and zombie. So if I spawn up a zombie and I go to, um, I'm going to set my stats real quick, FM set stat, all of them to 100. So, oh, whoops, I need to set player. So let's go and set my stats to 100. So now if I do slash GM zero and left shift, you'll see some spam pop up. Oh, okay, well, me start dying. You can see light attraction, bonus attraction, and attraction level. So my light attraction is how much attraction I'm generating from outside. The bonus attraction is my attraction, or my bonus reduction is how much I'm reducing just from having high level. Um, I'm reducing four from my uh, perception and three from my agility. So effectively, my attraction level is eight. So this mob can only see me from eight distance. But if I stand up, he's probably going to aggro onto me. Um, Come on, look at me. Okay, 16. Oh, okay. Just barely out of his view distance right now. That's like because my uh, view distance, his view distance is, he can't really tell because of how sneaky I am. So, um, he's kind of being dumb right now. There we go. So, yeah, there you go. So, now he aggroed onto me. Um, let me reset him. Um, so, yeah, that's um, the sneak system. There is a ton of things that affects whether or not zombies can hear you or tell if you're a human or not. If you're bleeding and have a broken leg, um, those are tells that um, zombies won't understand that you are a player, um, so they will know you are. If you're infected, however, zombies aren't necessarily sure if you're a zombie or not, so they have a much lower view distance for you, so they don't really tell if you're a human or not. So they have to be really close to you in order to tell. Uh, storms, rain, um, stuff like that is going to play a huge factor into the, your visibility. Um, obviously, being at nighttime, it's going to be a lot easier to, to traverse the day. Um, day or the night so um, yeah and last but not uh, least is the market system slash market you get four menus here um, you will only be able to use these in the east and north market and only two of these will be available at the start of the server um, there will be devices and blocks added in right here um, and those will be available at uh, uh, one of the markets I'm not really sure which one yet so you can see you have browse guns browse ammo browse medical and browse food so if I go to browse guns uh, you can see that all the guns are here. They're all set for the same price. So let me give my, let me check my money. Okay, so they're all set for the same price, and that's just for testing purposes. I'm not sure the price is just yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy a M107. But you can see the price says 1,000. Your the your buying and selling prices are affected directly by your charisma level. So the higher your charisma, the more you can sell items for, and the less you can. The less uh, items cost when you buy them. So if I buy this, I'm on seven. The display isn't properly displayed yet, so the normal value is a thousand. But if I buy this, you'll see I bought it for 750 instead of 1,000. Um, and now if I go back there, so market and go back to our guns, and I right-click the gun, I can sell it for 625, whereas I would have sold it for 500. So, yeah, that's a charisma stat. Um, and the economy, you will be able to, if you use slash market, you will have to be in the east or north market to actually use it. I'm an admin, so it's disabled. Um, and in these sections, the guns and ammo section will be available in the north market, and the east will be uh, have the browse medical and food. Uh, you, uh, you won't have to actually be in the marketplace itself. You will get a message saying that you are in the marketplace area. So let's go to the east market real quick and just demonstrate that. So right about here, I'll get a message. Here we go. Okay, so now I can use slash warp market. So once you warp to the market, um, it'll be in the general area around this. So you'll be able to use the slash market command right in this area. Um, and you will be able to use it outside this area too. So you might not need to TP. Um, I just want to make sure that you do need to walk somewhat close to the marketplace to actually get it. You, you're better off just TPing the market though to make sure you can use it. Um, and then last but not least, uh, I said that for economy, but there is just another little thing. So stamina HUD on. This here is a new way to show your stamina. Um, I kind of got annoyed, and I also noticed that people left a comment in one of the videos when I just played the stamina system that uh, having the stamina message spam your te your screen over here was kind of annoying. So if I do stamina um, 10, it'll message me every 10 stamina or 10 fatigue I generate. Oh wait, I um, need to be game mode zero, or it could just not work. <laughs> Of course. Um, let's do stamina like 50 or something. And let's go and check that out. That should send me a message here shortly. Oh, but I'm level 100, so it's going to take forever for my stamina to go down. FM set stat all to 1. Oh, whoops. Got to do me. And with a space, of course. Okay, so there we go. Now it should go down a lot faster. Okay. And FM 
or no, it's to be uh, so stamina HUD off. That turns off the HUD, and now it's at 25. So if I start sprinting around, you can see it says stamina is 50, 75, and yeah. So that kind of gets annoying because it kind of just spams the crap out of your screen. So if you do stamina HUD on, you get a little item down here in the bottom right. It's the elytra, and you cannot grab it. You cannot move it. If you die with it, it does not get dropped. Um, this item says the item. This item is a HUD item. It cannot be removed. It has a weight, which is strange. I'll have to disable that. Um, use stamina HUD off is the command to turn, get rid of it. So uh, stamina HUD off. Turns it off. There we go. And turn it back on. And so now this here, uh, basically the item down here in the bottom right, the durability represents your stamina. So if I hit almost three fourths of that durability, I'll get slow just like that, and then it'll go back up. And I really like though that if you actually keep sprinting and you do this. You actually get like broken lungs. I think that looks great. Those do those represent lungs very well. I think so. So yeah, there's that. Um, that's the stamina tracker. Um, it's a new way to track your stamina, and it's uh, less spammy. So I really enjoy that. So I think it's a very good, um, very very good method. So yeah, um, that is um, pretty much everything that's been added. Uh, there is a huge long list of everything that's been added that I'm not going to be able to cover just because of how much stuff I've added. I can't really keep track of everything. I'm just trying to show off some of the main features. So if you're interested in any of this, go check out the link in the description below to get to the Fallsy form page. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, though. Um, thank you all for watching. I look forward to seeing you all on 7-6-2016 on 1 p.m. EST. So I hope I get to see you all then, all right? Uh, thank you all for watching. As usual, please rate and subscribe, and thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.